In this chapter, we're going to talk about directional lights. What I've got here is the starting shader for chapter 6. And basically, this shader is just the finished shader from chapter 5. So what I'm going to do in this chapter is walk you through the process of converting an omni light to a directional light. And in the process, we're going to talk about the differences between omni lights and directional lights. So with the regular Max real-time viewport, when you're not using effect shaders, all you have to do is, is pick your omni light and switch it to a directional light, and then you get the functionality of a directional light. Well, let's see what happens if we do that uh, with an effects shader. So here I've got my omni light. It's set to omni mode. And what I'm going to do here is just switch it to a directional light. And what you'll see is that nothing really changed. Um, Generally, with directional lights, you can rotate them around so that the light is coming from another direction. But when I rotate this light, uh, it's not rotating at all. And the other property of a directional light is it doesn't matter where in your scene the directional light is. It's just the direction of the light that matters. So a uh, directional light acts like the sun. Um, but in this case, if I move this directional light around, you can see that it does matter. And so what we can see here is that our shader is treating this directional light as if it were an omni light, because our code is still programmed to treat this incoming light source as an omni light to use the light's position instead of its direction. And so what we need to do is come in here to our shader and make the changes required um, so that this directional light actually gets treated like a directional light. Uh, so let's scroll down here and find the place where we're bringing in the light information. So with the positional or with a with an omni light, what we want to bring in is the position of the light source. Um, but with a directional light, we actually want to bring in the direction. So instead of light one pos, we're going to change this to light one dir so we can remember that it's the direction that we're bringing in. And then we're going to change our little annotation here to direction. And changing that little bit of code tells Max that we want the direction of our light source uh, coming into this variable. And it's the direction in world space. Now we're going to come down here and just make a couple of things uh, a little bit more clear. Instead of light position, we'll just change it to light. And this, instead of point light, we're going to change it to target light. So those are the changes that are required uh, to bring in directional light data instead of uh, positional light data. Now our light color can stay the same because uh, you know a directional light and a positional light can both both have colors. Now we've changed this variable name here, light one dir. So let's copy this name, and wherever we wherever we were using light one pos before, we need to now use light one dir. So let's come down here to our techniques. And you can see that in our vertex shader, I'm passing in light one pos. And so uh, if I wanted to pass in the, uh, the directional light into my vertex shader, I would swap this variable and, and have it be light one dir. But what I want to do is, is talk to you about uh, what we're doing here with our position light data in the vertex shader. And what I want to show you is that we don't actually need to do anything in the vertex shader uh, with the directional light. So in the vertex shader, what we need to do is calculate the light vector in world space. So we take the light's position and we subtract the world space position of the point on our surface. And what that gives us is the world space light vector. Well, if you think about it, here, let's come up to our, our directional light again. What are we bringing in here? We're in world space, and what we're bringing in is the world space light vector. And so what that means is we don't actually have to do any calculations uh, in the vertex shader because we already have our world space light vector. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this line and delete it because we don't have to calculate uh, the world space light vector. Uh, we've already got it. And I'm also going to come up here to the struct that carries data from our vertex shader to our pixel shader. And here we've got 
float3 lightvec as a member of that struct. And I'm just going to delete that as well. Um, so we don't need to pass that light vector data from the vertex shader to the pixel shader because we just get it directly from the CPU. All right, so that brings us to the fragment program, the pixel shader. And this is where the real action happens. The first thing that I'm going to do is come down here and delete this code that calculates attenuation. Attenuation is what we talked about in the last chapter, but directional light doesn't have any attenuation because there's no data to telling you, you know, what, what the position of that light is um, because it's a directional light. So it doesn't matter how close or far away it is. Uh, you're always going to get the same brightness. So attenuation doesn't really make sense uh, for directional light. So I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to delete it here where we multiply uh, our values by the uh, resulting attenuation value. So we'll get rid of that. And I also want to come up here to the header and find the header element that determines the scale of our attenuation because we don't need that anymore. So I'll just go ahead and delete that. And we'll come back down here to the pixel shader. All right, so what we need to do here is we've got our light vector coming in. And this is the old way we are doing it. We are bringing in the light vector from the vertex shader and normalizing it. And instead of bringing in the light vector from the vertex shader, we just need to grab the, the variable up here in the header that we're filling with the world space light vector coming from the CPU. And so we'll copy that and come down here to our pixel shader again, and we'll normalize light1.dir. And so that's all there is to it. I'll just go ahead and hit save here. And it looks like we got a, a mistake. So I need to, in my technique, I'm telling it to pass in the light one position. And I actually need to get rid of that. So I'm not passing anything into uh, my vertex shader now. And I'll come back here, up here to my vertex shader and get rid of this uniform float for uh, light position because I'm not actually using that data anymore. And I'll hit save, and it'll refresh over here in the max viewport. And did you notice how it turned a little bit blue? Uh, the reason for that is when I change my light, uh, my incoming light data here into a directional light, in the material editor, it actually lost um, which light it was using from the scene. So I don't have the correct light color coming in. So if I drop this down and pick Omni 01 again, now you'll see that I have my light color back again. All right, so when we move our light around, you'll notice that it doesn't affect the teapot at all. So it makes no difference, you know, what position at all uh, my light is in the scene. But if I rotate the light, now you can see, you know, the light's coming from above, or the light's coming from underneath, just like a directional light should behave. So there we go. Really simple. Actually, directional light is, is more simple uh, than an omni light, but we started out by talking about omni lights because they look a little bit more interesting. So now you understand how to bring uh, omni light data into, into the shader. Um, you basically just switch it from uh, position to direction here. So you're bringing that data in, and you don't have to do anything in the vertex shader. So you can just get rid of all the information in your vertex shader that's refer refer referencing lights um, because we already have our uh, light vector in world space. And so we can just take that directly into the pixel shader and use it in our lighting calculations uh, instead of having to calculate it and then bring it in. So that's how you do directional lighting. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about how to do spotlights. Now spotlights are a little bit more advanced because you have to bring in both the direction and the position. So we'll be talking about that in the next chapter.